Today we're having a look at this. This is an Apple Mac power supply from a 27 inch iMac, a late 2015 5K model. This Mac suffered a lightning strike and I think a whole load of volts went up its ethernet port and it killed the main board. It actually split the, um, the main Intel chipset in half, basically. So I've checked out the CPU and I've checked out the RAM and both of those work fine. So I need to check out this power supply before I just blindly shove it into the new mainboard. Now, of course, being a Mac, this thing is totally non-standard. You have a 12 volt output connector here. So that's 12 volt and, and ground. You have the mains input coming in here. And at the back, we can see a few. So we know that that is the live. And that's uh, what we're gonna connect up to the live, the neutral there. And if we look at the back here, that's where the power button goes. So we should just be able to short those terminals together in order to get it to fire up. We will be connecting it up to our trusty BK Precision 8540. Now this can only do 150 watts, but I reckon if I can get a reasonable sort of load on it, then I'm gonna be happy that the power supply itself is going to be okay. The first thing I'm going to do is solder this very safe contraption um, just onto the input pins of the power supply. And this will give me a live and a neutral onto the board, which I can then just plug into a standard socket. Now, as I said earlier, if we look down on the board, this is a three pin connector, but the middle pin's not used, it's only the two outer pins that used. And this pin here goes straight into a fuse, uh, so that's gonna be the live. And then this pin here will be the neutral. So what we have to remember is that the neutral is on the outside edge of that board. So let's flip that over and round. Neutral on here, live on here. Let's get those tinned up. And for bigger jobs like this, we always use the Jabe soldering iron. Just tin those on. That looks pretty good. Obviously, as this is main stuff, you need to be quite careful what you're doing. So I'm gonna uh, attempt not to electrocute myself. I've electrocuted myself hundreds of times. I must be immune to it by now, surely. So neutral on the left. Again, always quite difficult soldering under an iPad. You have to kind of look around it to uh, solder onto it. And you've got to try and keep it in shot. They look pretty good. They're not going anywhere. I think I'm going to flip it, connect it up, and see if it goes bang, and then um, get a multimeter onto those uh, those ends there. I think one side is ground, and the other side is uh, plus 12 volts. Let's see if it goes bang. Well, it didn't go bang. Let's measure the, um, see if there's anything on that, because I think that's the standby power supply as well. I think this power supply is kind of in two parts. And I'm being very careful because I know it's live mains, but I think there's kind of like a standby supply, and then I think that supplements the main supply, because this is a 300 watt power supply, it's quite lumpy. There's only one output. So I think, yeah, I think this is kind of like a, almost like piggybacked on top of each other. And I think the main one maybe kicks in when the machine is brought out of standby and into normal running mode. Let's uh, see if there is any voltage on that connector. 12.04. So we're literally just putting one probe in one side of the connector and one probe in the other. 
Right now I need to connect that connector up to my dummy load. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a couple of headers onto this power supply that I can clip the BK Precision uh, crocodile clips onto. So we don't need the multimeter anymore. Let's put one header in that side and I've actually just unplugged the power supply just to be on the safe side. This is a very quick and dirty test really. I'm going to put them at opposite ends. I can get that one in there. Okay, we're now going to plug that back in again. If I can find the uh, socket, there we go. We're going to use the multimeter just to quickly again check the polarity. Interesting. Not quite sure what's going on there. Okay, it's just not making a good connection. Okay, so the top is positive and the bottom is negative. So the top is positive, bottom negative. And that uh, concurs with what, what our multimeter read. Right, first of all, we're going to set this up to draw about half an amp out of the power supply. And that'll do. We'll just turn that on. That looks pretty good. Still in the right sort of range. So what happens if we bring that up to an amp? Yeah, again, that's pretty good too. I'm quite happy with that. What I really want to do is just whack the amps up and just um, see if I can get it to do more once I get that power button pushed on the back. I'm just going to whack it up a little bit more. I'm going to it up to two amps, see if it's got two amps standby. Yeah. That looks pretty good to me. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm not really sure how the standby thing kind of works with it. Obviously the power button turns it on, but let's unplug it, flip it over and try switching it on. Now this is a little bit different from the previous Mac power supplies because they had multiple voltages coming out. They had a 12, they had a 5, they had a 3.3 and a 3.3 standby. But on this particular Mac, um, all the voltage conversion is done on the mainboard. I'm going to find a nice insulated screwdriver just to touch those two terminals and uh, see if we can whack the amps up a bit more. Let's see what happens when I short that out then. Not much. I would have expected that to have come out of some sort of standby and be chucking out a few more volts because of the load I've got it under. But it hasn't. That's weird. Because at the moment that's a little bit low. There's a little connector on the back here that connects up to the Mac mainboard. And that could be why it's not allowing it to come on. But it certainly seems to be running, you know, in in standby, certainly. The voltage is, is correct. 
So I think I'm going to just have to suck it and see, and see if it actually works. So I can't see any damage to it, and despite the fact this thing was basically struck by lightning through the Ethernet port, um, the processor was intact, the RAM was intact, um, the Intel chipset had kind of been blown in half, but you know, other than that, the machine was absolutely fine. So I think I'm going to risk it. I think I'm going to plug this into a new mainboard. Um, if the worst comes to worst, it just won't boot up and I'll have to get another power supply. Um, otherwise, it will just work. Looking good. Thank you for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and a like. And until next time, goodbye.